Before we get into today's tales of terror, I just want to take a minute to talk about Amino. Amino is a community-based app that lets you explore, discover, and obsess over things you're into. Each community has great content, the friendliest of people, and exciting events. There are seemingly endless amounts of communities popping up on Amino every single day. Here are a few I am personally fond of. Horror Amino, Creepypasta Amino, and Paranormal Amino. There are plenty of other ones as well. You can make blog posts, polls, and more, as well as watch videos, share images and GIFs, and a completely customizable profile. My personal favorite aspect of this app is the way that it virtually allows anyone from anywhere to meet like-minded people. So, come join us and check out Amino. Download it using the link down below. I was attacked by something. So last night my wife and I were outside, smoking on the front porch. We live in a small suburban town in the southwest. About 11.30 p.m., something swooped down out of the night sky and attacked us. Where it gets super sketch is that the second we fought it off and it flew away into the night, I could feel my memories of the whole thing fading, just vanishing out of my head. I ran in and started typing right away, and my wife was panicking and telling me not to write anything down, to just let the memories go. Much to her distress, I wrote down everything I could. I still retain everything I managed to write down that night. The physical description is about six feet tall, humanoid in appearance, except instead of arms, it had giant 21 foot wingspan wings. The wings were oval, best way I can describe it. Imagine an infinity symbol 21 feet long and six foot tall. Now put a six foot tall man in the middle. The figure was entirely black except for the wingtips. Again, imagine an infinity symbol. The outline was reflective white like you would use on a street sign. The rest was dark black. I couldn't make out or don't remember any features or other details. No tail, no horns, if that, if that helps at all. I don't know why it attacked us. and I don't know exactly how it attacked us. We have no cuts or anything, but it attacked. I don't know how we fought it off. I vaguely remember praying. I'm sorry that that's all I remember. My wife is very upset with me this morning. She doesn't remember a thing, and she woke up calling me Monster Hunter. I don't know why, but she was a lot more upset than I was writing it down. Now, of course, she remembers nothing. Can anyone offer any insight on this? I'm going to check my cameras when I get home from work, and if they show anything, I'll update. Update. My crappy cameras only show us going in and out of the house. It doesn't show us what we're looking at. Let's start this off by saying that this is not my story, but that of a buddy of mine that I used to work with. So shout out to Jesse. I am a 20 year old male. I live in the lower half of Oklahoma, about an hour away from Oklahoma City. I work at a fast food restaurant with a very high turnover rate. So needless to say, I've met and talked to several interesting and odd people we've hired. However, I've always been very personable and love getting to know people by asking them questions they may not normally be asked. One day, Jesse and I were both off and began talking about the supernatural and how even though I'm a skeptic, I still love hearing people's stories. When out of nowhere, he gets really serious. His face goes slightly pale, and he says, I have a story. By his sudden change in mood, I could tell he was serious. He was usually such a bubbly guy. Jesse said it happened like this. One day, Jesse and his friend, let's call him Phil, were skipping school, as rambunctious kids do, in the same area we now work in. Phil's father owns several properties but had one in particular that was never really used much. It was a plot of land with maybe around 30 acres, mostly just sparse trees and grass. But the thing about this property was that it had a house on it. One of those old maybe 50s or 60s houses that looked like the people had just up and left one day with no reason or belongings. 
They just left. Being bored and not of anything else to do in rural Oklahoma, they thought it would be a good idea to go explore. It was about three in the afternoon and a bright and sunny day, traveling down the dirt road to the house. Arriving there shortly, they got out of their truck and walked the path leading to the house, moving the gate as they entered. The house itself was a two-story old country-style house, with a big porch and a somewhat sizable living room as it seemed. They both walked up the creaky porch, each step letting out a crackly sound as they moved. Phil decided to go explore the inside, while Jesse elected to explore the outside and porch. Phil went inside, leaving the barely hinged door open, while Jesse looked around. Exploring the porch, he found nothing of interest, so hopped off the porch and began walking around the side. As he did, he said he began to hear some sort of heavy breathing and heavy footsteps. Thinking it was only Phil, Jesse continued around the house. Now halfway around the large house when he suddenly heard the loudest shrieking sound he'd ever heard. He froze. Phil's father never used this land, let alone for livestock. Why would there be a goat out here? Before Jesse could move, a figure slowly walked from around the corner. It was tall, six foot eight or taller, and very lean and buff, he said. He nervously looked up at its head, only to find a more off-putting sight. A goat's head sat on top of a muscular torso, looming down on him and very obviously looking at him. Jesse snapped out of it and bolted back towards the path they came from, screaming the whole way. Phil, hearing this, ran out of the house yelling, What? What? What is it? When he too must have noticed the figure. Now closer to the porch, just staring at him. Phil took off too, catching up to Jesse, passing, and tripping Jesse. No joke, tripping Jesse in hopes of a better chance of survival, maybe. Jesse, shaken but not hurt, got back up to continue running, but not before one last look back at that house. All he saw was the goat man, now standing in front of the house, just watching them leave, motionless. They both got to the truck fine. Jesse rightly ticked off by being tripped by his friend, and they hightailed it out of there. The moral of the story? Don't trespass on Goatman's property. And if you do, make sure you're faster than your so-called friends. I'm going to try to make this as short as possible because this was a fairly long trip. I don't feel like it's necessary to go into too much detail about the whole trip itself, so I'm just going to give a little backstory, then really go into the detail of the meat of the story. My best friend and I were around nine years old at the time. One day, she calls me and asks if I want to go intertubing with her and her mom. It wasn't actual intertubing. Her mom went to the store and bought some floaties and dropped us off at the National Park about 10 minutes away from where we live. Yes, you read that right. Her mom dropped two nine-year-olds off at a national park in the middle of the woods. Turns out, my friend only said her mom was coming so my parents would let me go. Anyways, the plan was intertube down this river, which led into town, then walk to her dad's house and call her mom to pick us up. The trip goes all right. Some parts of the river were shallow, so we'd have to stand up and walk through the river, holding our inner tubes, until it got deep enough to float again. It was super fun and relaxing, being all alone in the wilderness, just enjoying each other in the water. The only part that freaked me out at this point was the fact that there was no trespassing signs posted on a few trees on our way down the river. The river we were on was close to the road that led to the National Park. That was to our left. To the right was wilderness that stretched on for miles and miles. We get to a point that were deeper than the rest, I'd say about 10 feet. We're laughing and joking around when all of a sudden we hear rustling to our right. We couldn't see much. The bank was overgrown with ferns or some other type of foliage that grew way taller than either of us, even taller than the height of a full-grown man. All the blood drains in my face and we are both paralyzed in fear. As we watch a tall, 
human-like figure on two feet holding its arms out like a raptor does and passes through the foliage. We couldn't see it, just the shadow of it. Of course, I'm on the side closer to whatever the freak this creature is. Two thoughts went through my head as this was happening, but I didn't dare make a sound. It was a person. I thought about the no trespassing signs, and I was terrified that I was going to have to sit here and beg for my life to some crazy outback hilly hunter or something. That's when I noticed that I could see the outline of a definite fur all over its body. The next thought, it could be a bear. This scared me even more, because animals like this have no sense of wrong or right. At least, if it was a person, I'd have a chance to beg for my life and possibly be successful in doing so. A bear would just rip the both of us apart and wouldn't see anything wrong with it, or just lunch. A few minutes pass, still complete silence. I look over to my friend, still on edge and very uneasy, but I manage to whisper and ask her if she wants to get out of the water and walk the rest of the way. She of course replies yes. We paddle ourselves to the water with our arms and make it to the bank towards the road. It was about five to ten minute walk up the steep hill, but oh well. It was better than staying down there and risk seeing that goddamn creature again. We walked until eventually her mom pulls up and says that she had the feeling to come check on us because we haven't called yet. It wasn't until after that we realized it definitely wasn't a person. It was covered in fur. I don't think it was a bear. It walked on two legs perfectly and actually ran. By the way, we ended up doing this in the same area twice after this, once a few months after this happened, however, but nothing happened again. I deliver for a local pizza chain in southern Ohio. It's in a rather small city with lots of farmland and heavily wooded roads. So you can imagine, I have seen a few odd and unexplainable things while driving around during the night. I have seen strange orange lights in the sky. I shine from animals peeking out from storm drains. Something that looked to be the tail of a large reptile disappearing off the side of the road. A strange green orb hover above some trees. However, the creepiest and most unnerving experience I have had happened late one night while I was driving down one of those long wooded roads, having to use my brights because there are no streetlights for several miles when I got a strange feeling that I wasn't alone this time. I started to look around and noticed something to my left in the trees. There was a pair of bright red, glowing eyes about five or six feet above the ground staring right at me. I immediately slowed down to do a double take. And then another, and another, as these eyes watched me slowly drive by. My heart and mind were racing as I began trying to make sense of the situation. Maybe it was a mailbox reflector, but there were no houses there. Or maybe brake lights on a car, but that did not make sense either, since there was nothing there but trees. I even went as far as thinking maybe someone had hung something in the trees as a joke. But they were gone when I came back. Once I had passed and I could no longer see whatever it was that was watching me, I began looking for road signs to use as markers for when I returned back down the road after I had delivered the pizza. Well, on my way back down the road, I drove carefully and slowly looking for the spot of my encounter. I started to slow down as soon as I saw the road signs, and began to scan the tree line with the camera on my phone, ready to snap a picture of anything I saw. But there was nothing there. It was gone. Ever since that night, I have been up and down that road countless times, and have never seen those eyes again, or anything else in that spot. I thought it must have been an animal of some kind, if nothing else. But when I did some minor research into different animals who have eyes that glow red, there were none living in the area. I have asked around and believe it was most likely the Mothman, but I have no idea why it would reveal itself to me. I may never know. I still frequent this eerie road, as well as many others on my routes. I will be getting a dash cam, because most of the time when I'm on these roads, I feel as if I'm being watched, and I would love to catch something on camera to have as proof other than just my word.
I grew up mostly in the Southwest, Arizona and New Mexico. I am not of Hispanic descent, but have been told numerous times of a gnome named Hel Duande. Either my friends or their family have told me the story. Apparently, he is a troll that will come out at different times in a Hispanic household. He likes to mess with the children or scare them. I went to my friend Roman's house one night. He told me of this phenomenon, and I never actually believed it. That was until El Duande actually appeared in his front yard. We were playing outside, and there goes a gnome shadow. My friend actually tried going after it, but I was way too freaked out by the incident. After we couldn't see it any more, he just laughed it off as if it were a normal, everyday experience for him. I was over again a year later or so. This time, I was just about to fall asleep in his room, when out of the corner of my eye comes this gnome shadow right into the room. It ran a path to the window and disappeared. I still had my suspicion for many years. Was someone messing with me? Or was this actually the infamous El Duande? I'm a lot older now, and I still hear of that story. One night, I was sitting alone in my house. I saw a shadow run by my windowsill and jump toward the ground. It ran around and even went behind furniture to come out on the other side. I said to myself, Dang that El Duande. What didn't make sense to me was that I don't live in a Hispanic household. My girlfriend is not Mexican descent either. I have been very confused and I still catch glimpses of this troll. Has anyone else experienced this? What type of explanation could there be? Does El Duande wander your home? What types of stories were you told of the El Duande? From the stories I was told, this is a troll that wanders Mexican households. No one of any other race has mentioned this to me ever. I have also watched the show Fact or Faked, where they show a video of some children breaking out over a gnome shadow. This is where I was reintroduced to the gnome. The gnome in the video looks exactly like what I saw that night. Now, he lurks in my house. So I debated on sharing this, simply because I'm not really sure what to call it. I am no stranger to the paranormal or cryptids out there. And normally, I can label something when someone talks about it or if I see something. But this seriously messes with me, and even worse, I think it's trying to hurt people. Where I work, there is an attic. No, not a creepy little lit 30 attic. The attic at my work is large, well lit, clean, and of bright white. There is heavy metal racking that is empty a good part of the year, and we have steel grids on them. They are heavy enough to hold over a ton, but still lose enough that if you ran on them, they would make noise. Now, the attic has its fair share of awkward moments that I could write about, including at one point, a poltergeist. But this is not the story I'm sharing. I'm not just limited to the attic, but it's an important factor, so here it goes. This happened a few months ago, and it was after closing time, the first time it happened. I had to go out into the courtyard to put up signs for the next day. The courtyard has a heavy metal ceiling about two stories up, mind you. As I walked to the first automatic door, it opened well before the sensor would pick me up on it, and I just stood there. Something in my head said not to go there, as a wave of unease hit me. It didn't feel like the paranormal feels I usually get, and that made me a bit nervous. So I chose to walk the extra yard to the other door. It was closer to where I needed to put the sign in the dim lit yard. As I got to the door, it, like the other door, opened well before I got near it. I felt like there was something that I couldn't see. It closed and I cleared my thoughts and went to the courtyard. I had to put the signs out if I wanted to go home and it was late. I went out there and I felt like I was being watched from the ceiling as I walked. I could hear something was moving in the high metal beams. It honestly sounded like talons against the beams. And I looked up and saw nothing. No birds, no figures, no shadows. 
just pure white beans with nothing on it. I put the last sign up, and I could hear something still following me from above. I began to quicken my pace to the door and suddenly I heard the shipper of heavy boxes a few feet behind me make noise like something massive had fallen on it. I looked at the shipper and indeed there was a huge indent that wasn't there before. I moved quickly but not running to the door. As I walked back to where my co-workers waited for me to leave, I heard the doors open behind me but there was nothing there. The next day, I worked, I had chosen to push the strange incident from my mind and try to shake it off as some sort of unusual daydream or something. The day went on like normal for the first few hours, but I had to run some of the things up to the attic, choosing to take the elevator for easier transfer. I remember hearing the same metal claws combo as I began to head upstairs, as if it was following me in the underbelly of the attic stairs. It legitimately paused when I looked towards the sound and was zoomed when I started walking again. I decided to keep focused and not dwell on it. I have learned, dwelling on something seems to make it more interested in you, no matter what it is. I went upstairs and started sorting items. I heard something come from up the stairs, but I saw nothing there. I honestly remember feeling like something was perched on one of the beams near me. It was like if I really wanted to see it, I would, like whatever it was really wanted me to. It was strange feeling of tug of war in my own mind. I told myself to ignore it, but was there was this feeling that I just couldn't. It wasn't my own. It was screaming at me saying, see me, but I ignored it. My whole body felt like it was itching to run, but I knew I couldn't. I walked back to the elevator and I shit you not, the partisan visibly moved it was like something large was running along the heavy metal shelves. The rack was actually moving like something large and invisible was following me. When I got into the elevator, I heard it hit the wooden ground in front of it. The elevator shifted. I stood there, focused on the doors. But I knew that it was in there with me. I felt like it was hovering near me, waiting for me to freak out and look at it. Instead, for some unknown reason to this day I can't explain, I reached for where I felt like it was, without looking. I tried to touch whatever it was, and I'm not joking. It felt like the elevator shifted, like something large had backed away suddenly and hit the wall as the doors opened. I walked out quickly, and since then I have not heard or felt anything, and I've said nothing to any of my coworkers. Unfortunately, I don't think it's gone. Since then. There has been a ridiculous amount of injuries upstairs that no one can figure out. I myself got my hand nearly broken by the beams that fell at random. Another co-worker said he felt like he tripped over something large that he couldn't see and had fallen down. So, is this some sort of invisible cryptid or maybe something paranormal? Before I start, let me give some background information. I am a 14-year-old female from Victoria, Australia. I live around one half an hour from Geelong, which is around one hour from Melbourne. My area is what is considered the country. I also have a large reserve only about a block from my house. This story takes place around two weeks ago. I was home alone on a Saturday night. My mother was with my father in Melbourne for a business trip, and my sister was with her boyfriend and would be home later. I was in the lounge room watching Netflix when I heard a thunk from the front veranda. It was too early for my sister to be home, so I thought it was the neighbor's dog. He can sometimes jump to the fence and come looking for food or something to play with. I went to the front door and looked through the window to the side. It was not the dog. There was a tall figure, maybe 210 centimeters tall, which is about seven feet for Americans. It had goat's legs covered in gray fur with black hooves and bright yellow eyes, which looked right back at me. I ran back to the living room in blind panic. What the fuck was that? I thought. In a random idea, I grabbed my phone and started playing the loudest song I could find, which happened to be Hero by Jonathan Young. This wasn't an attempt to either scare or lure the beast away. 
Then I heard the window smash behind me. I ran to the kitchen to grab something to protect myself, which ended up being a cleaver. This thing started thudding around the hall towards the room I was in. It was probably 30 seconds, but it felt like hours. Waiting for that thing to finally appear. Finally, I spotted its glowing eyes in the darkness and ran at it swinging. I felt my knife stab into something and I pushed it deeper and twisting. The creature screamed in pain and pulled back, running away and jumping back out the window. I spent the next three hours locked in my room with two knives and a torch next to me. When my sister came home, she asked what was wrong, but I just stuttered. Win window, G goat stab, over and over. My sister came out with me and looked around and found a large hoof prints in the hall and in the yard. We stayed together the entire night. I still heard the clacking of its feet every night just outside my window, probably looking to hurt me in any way it can. It hasn't come back for a few days and I'm hoping that I don't see it again. I've seen quite a few things that I have a hard time explaining. My father served in the military, was descended from a Native American tribe from up north, was a survivalist, and a complete sociopath that forced his sons into intense survival scenarios and then left us for weeks on end to see if we'd survive. I've seen some truly disturbing things during these camping trips, and some things in less stressful settings. Anyways, I'll get on with the sighting. I was 11. I had just moved back to America less than a week before. My family had decided to take a short road trip up to Maine to visit some family when we went off course. Being 11 and naive enough to think that I would actually make it to Maine before my father did, anything stupid. I didn't pay attention to when he pulled off onto a back road. To this day, I do not know where I was dropped off at, just that it was in a dense, forested area. I think it was in New York, but I can't say for certain. I was kicked out of the car, handed my canteen, my bow, my compass, and my quiver. I was told that they'd be back after visiting family, and I'd have 15 days out here. I did the basic survival stuff. Found drinkable water, built shelter, plotted out a rough map of the area in my head, and all of that stuff. It was my third or fourth night there when I heard what sounded like a woman screaming. Since mountain lions didn't come out this far east and bears were easy to scare away if it was one, I figured that I'd go investigate, in case that it was an injured hiker or something. After following the sound, all that I could find was a squirrel that was partially eaten. Since the screaming had stopped, I figured that someone had been hiking and came across those, but had left there calming down. So, I went back to my shelter and settled in for the night. After that, though, the screaming became a nightly occurrence and after the third night of not finding anything aside from evidence of a predator in the area, I decided to play it safe and stay in my shelter at night. Two days before my family would pick me up where I was, I woke up in the middle of the night to screaming right outside my shelter. I jumped out with bow in hand, my knife and arrow in the other. What I saw terrified me. It was about the size of a dog, but shaped like a deer. It had a very humanoid face, and was covered in dull, dark scales. I panicked and shot it in the chest. It began hissing and wheezing as it ran off into the trees. I had thought about following it and killing it, but then I looked at its tracks. I saw something that convinced me otherwise. The creature's hind legs left behind the tracks of a small deer. The front legs, however, you see a person walking on their hands like a gorilla. Only the fingers ended with sharp claws, marks scratching up the earth while it moved. I didn't sleep at all for the rest of the night, and on the following morning, I dug several holes around my camp, filled them with sharpened stakes and covered them. I also did my squirrel hunting and harvested berries as fast as I could once my defenses were up, so that I wouldn't need to worry about losing my strength if that thing came back. It didn't that night, not that I got any sleep anyway. In the morning, I just carved a simple warning into the trees around my camp that said danger traps and left. I didn't let go of my bow until after I was picked up and we had been driving for an hour. I honestly don't know what I saw or if the light had been playing tricks on me. I just know that I heard a screaming sound and that I know what I saw in the creature's tracks.
I live in Utah, a state that is often overlooked when it comes to the paranormal. However, I can assure you that this state has had more than its fair share of strange happenings. From the Bear Lake Monster in the north, to Skimwalk Ranch in the south, and even some Bigfoot sightings in the mountains. The one thing that I never thought I would see was the fabled Chupacabra. This happened about two days ago, so I figured I would write this down while the encounter is still fresh in my mind. My friends and I were on a late night drive through a canyon near Salt Lake City. We often go on these drives as there isn't much to do on a weeknight in Salt Lake City. We had just turned the corner when our headlights caught something crossing the road. At first I thought it was a coyote, as this thing was the same size and relative shape. However, as we got closer I could see that it was walking strangely, almost as if it were hopping or galloping. Even more strange was the fact that it seemed to be missing a lot of hair. Now, I would be willing to accept that it was a coyote suffering from mange if it wasn't for what I saw next. It had abnormally large and powerful looking hind legs, and when it turned to face the car, I saw two fangs protruding from its muzzle. After we safely exited the canyon, we were all a little shaken up and decided to call it a night. I'll never return to that canyon again. This happened a few years ago. I was staying at my sister's house in rural Oregon. She lived right by a big forested hillside. While I stayed at her house, I usually slept with the windows open because she had lots of pets and I have pet allergies. I'm a cat lover though, so the cat would usually sleep in my room regardless. My room was on the second story of the house, with the windows facing towards the hillside. The hillside was roughly 50 yards in the actual house with a small field in between. So, one night, at around 1 a.m., I was up on my laptop playing some Warcraft, when the cat jumped onto the windowsill and started growling and hissing. Then I heard a very large thing start crashing through the brush on the hillside at a running pace. It was running down the hill, and the noise was getting louder. Every time I got to the bottom, though, it would run back up. This went on for about 10 minutes. Then, it would reach the bottom another time. I heard what sounded like some kind of animal squealing in pain. It was ear-piercingly loud, and at that point, the cat stopped growling and ran out of my room, and I just sat there with my face pressed on the screen on my window, trying to see whatever that thing was. I could hear the bone snapping on whatever it was eating. Then I heard it exit the brush and it stepped into the field. This thing was so big that I could feel the vibrations from its feet hitting the ground from the second story of the house. And while it was still about 40 yards away, I still couldn't see it in the darkness, though. So I went to find a flashlight. Once I found it and shined it out there, all I saw was this thing on all fours. It was still pushing about five feet tall. It had a pale gray blood covered skin and a bear like face, but with gaping eyes, and it was staring right at me. It snarled its teeth and made a growl and I thought it was going to climb up the fire escape ladder and kill me. I was frozen in fear, just staring at this thing as I took a few more steps forward. All of a sudden the cat came rushing back into the room and back to my window seal and growled back at this thing. It glared at the cat for a moment and then retreated to the hillside, crashing through brush again on its way back up. I followed it with my flashlight and saw a pair of glowing eyes once it got to the top, as if it stopped to look back. Then they disappeared. I closed my windows, shut the blind, and tried getting some sleep, but had nightmares about the beast. The next day, I asked my sister and her husband if they had heard or saw anything the night before, and they didn't. I have no idea what that thing could have been, but the fact that I could feel the footsteps made it all too real. <laughs>